Hello, I'm Tom Hollingsworth, and you are watching Networking Field Day 13. We are here in San Jose, California with Viptela. We have invited a group of networking bloggers, speakers, podcasters, and luminaries of the community to take part in this discussion, offer their opinions, ask questions, and add their voice to the, the conversation about software-defined wide area networking. If you would like to learn more about Tech Field Day, including how to become a presenter or a delegate, please join us at our website, techfieldday.com. If you would like to see more videos about this and other exciting technologies, please check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash techfieldday. Thank you, Tom, and uh, thank you, everyone, for visiting us on this wonderful, sunny San Jose day. We thought it would be very nice to show you the sun out there and have you all locked in this room for two hours. <laughs> so uh, the, the journey that we've been through so far has been pretty incredible. Um, the company started more than four years ago, uh, but it was really about 18 months ago that we had kind of an inflection point. Uh, a very large Fortune 500 retailer and a Fortune 500 bank came over to us and said, hey, I have a problem. I've seen your solution. I've played around with your solution. I know it works. Help me through this journey to transform my wide area infrastructure to an all SD-WAN network. So we took it upon ourselves to actually go through that challenge. Six months later, we had thousands of sites across these large Fortune 500 bank and retailers deployed. To us, in many ways, that was really the start of this explosive growth for the company. And I'm very excited to share with you our success, our experiences, show the product in action, and get all the feedback from you guys as well. So we have an action-packed agenda for you guys today. Um, we'll, we'll go through a, a short introduction to not SD-WAN, because it looks like everybody is aware uh, of SD-WAN and how their dog behaves as well. Uh, but we'll go through uh, the technology overview, what are the competence of the solution, how do we think about SD-WAN, uh, more importantly, and some of the, the use cases that our customers have brought to us and also show many of these things in action. So I'm going to spend about 15 minutes to cover that, and then after that it's going to be demo, 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 and demo. We'll show all of the things that I'm going to talk about in action as well. So. Uh, let me quickly start off with uh, an overview of the company. Again, as I mentioned, four years ago we got started. Uh, incredible journey. We have uh, over 100 enterprise customers deployed. Uh, and to us, a deployed customer means somebody who has critical infrastructure running on our technology has paid us for a period of time. And we, have, we take pride in, uh, in the number of sites that we have production deployed. Uh, that continues to grow by the day. We are uh, trending upwards of uh, 15,000 sites. And given that we've been selling our products for a little over two years, this has been a pretty amazing journey for us. Along the way, certainly, we have taken uh, some of the, the largest of the Fortune 500 companies uh, along with us in this, in this journey, uh, 25 plus Fortune 500 customers in, in manufacturing, retail, financial services, healthcare, all converting their infrastructure into, into SD-WAN. Uh, we also have the, the, the three of the largest 1,000-plus site networks as well uh, on the SD-WAN infrastructure. And as we go through this journey of, of what is the product, what is the solution, you will see why this automatically scales to such large extent as well. Now, we are not alone in this whole process. Uh, we, we do have very good partnerships with uh, some of the largest service providers. Um, Verizon, Singtel, and so forth, uh, and also some of the largest of the, of the systems integrators. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, not why you need SD-WAN, but why are customers deploying SD-WAN, because we have a, a wide variety of, of use cases, and I kind of want to double-click on, on that. So if you look at the, uh, the overall journey of, of SD-WAN itself, it's been mostly around take a private network, take a public infrastructure, merge them, you get high bandwidth, and off you go. Uh, that's been kind of where the, the roots of the technology and the roots of the market has been. But over time, this has actually evolved quite a bit. Uh, there's not a single day that goes by where we have conversations with customers on O365. Now, many of you are wondering, what does Office 365 have to do with the wide area? Turns out, quite a bit, because Microsoft says, exit out to the internet, do a direct internet access, 
access the Microsoft Cloud, and that's the best way to access uh, O365. Now, guess what the current infrastructure looks like? Backhaul all the traffic back to a data center, a regional DMZ, and then exit out uh, to, to the internet. So this placement of a public cloud gateway or a, a SaaS gateway is a pretty key element in, in all of this. And that's, again, driving the discussion towards an SD-WAN capable network and an SD-WAN uh, network as well. Compliance and security. Um, certainly for line of business reasons, for credit card transactions, for HIPAA compliance, customers are looking for how do I make my current infrastructure compliant. Now, MPLS has done a phenomenal job because everybody trusts MPLS. It's isolated. It's not encrypted, but it's isolated, and it gives you that compliance. But the minute I start to mix private and public networks, what does that look like? And we've been able to help multiple customers get the compliance that they absolutely require for their infrastructure as well. Now, many of you uh, have seen how AWS has grown, actually explosively grown, uh, and many of our customers, enterprise customers, are, are deploying applications in AWS, Azure, uh, and Google Compute Cloud, and so forth, and want to make that part of the wide area so that you don't have to take traffic again from your branch, go to a data center, cloud burst it to a public cloud, and make the network somehow work that way. Uh, we help customers through their journey of making their public cloud part of the wide area. And, and that's a pretty key element in order to get the user experience that the, our customers rightfully deserve. Now, those are, again, just some of the, the use cases that we help our customers through. And, and for certain industry verticals in particular, there are specific use cases, retail, especially with all of the retail analytics that need to happen about the omni-channel experience and so forth. There's requirements for bandwidth. There is requirements for segmentation. There is requirements for a multi-tenant retail location. Every one of us that has walked into one of the, the large uh, retailers to buy groceries, whatnot, has seen a coffee shop, has seen many other things inside that retail chain. So your retail location no longer is single tenant. It's actually inherently becoming multi-tenant. And so there's a lot of innovation that needs to happen inside that infrastructure to make things work. Healthcare, continuum of care is a pretty big deal for this country. Uh, when, when, a, when a patient goes through this journey of ad getting admitted at the hospital, uh, an acute care facility, to a third party facility, to all the way up to home, you need to have that continuum of care. Now guess what, the network absolutely plays a critical role in that, and some of our customers have publicly talked about how we have helped them through that journey as well. And certainly in manufacturing, especially with business partners coming into the mix, industrial IoT now coming into the mix and so forth. So for, for those of you that look at SD-WAN and say it's about mixing private and public networks, it's not just that. It is a whole lot more. We've been able to help customers through this, through this whole process. Now I certainly understand and admit to the fact that this space is extremely crowded. I think the last count was over 30 vendors in this particular space. And we've not seen a clear definition of, of what is what. And so we have taken a stab at this. Uh, we've kind of defined three classes of, of SD-WAN players here. And, and from a customer standpoint, when you look at it, look at it with this lens. Um, some flavors focus on application optimization. They start with application is everything. It's all session-based. I need to optimize things going either to the cloud or I need to optimize the application itself for its behavior. That's a piece of it. That's one piece of optimizing connectivity. Once again, if you relate this back to the use cases that our customers have, it's a piece of it. Um, transport optimization is another category where you look at, hey, the world is moving from MPLS to all broadband. And oh, by the way, broadband is inherently lossy. And let me fix that for you. Uh, that's, again, a piece of the problem. It does not make an enterprise network a whole. And we'll talk about why why that is not uh, a whole as well. And then finally, uh, we, we categorize ourselves in this full stack SD-WAN uh, category where it's about hybrid infrastructure. It's about not just uh, mixing MPLS in public, it's about bringing in LTE, it's bringing in cloud, it's bringing in SaaS, it's bringing in compliance, security, centralized policy, centralized management, all of, all of them. And so our promise to our customers is really this. We provide you with enterprise class SD-WAN capabilities that's cloud ready, that's hardened and secure, 
simple to operate. It's really that simple, right? It's really these four categories that, that we excel at. And this whole thing is delivered either as a service, on-premise, exists with your ex existing infrastructure, interoperates really well. That's kind of the undertone. That's why you see it in a, in a slightly smaller font as well. This is really the promise that we are providing to our enterprise customers. And the route to market is, is either uh, through a, a channel partner, through a managed service provider. We take multiple partners along the way as well. Now, let me talk a little bit about what each of these things mean. What does enterprise class mean? And I'm going to have a layer cake uh, here. We start with a completely blank piece, and we'll fill it up. Uh, at, the, at the root of it, it's about a transport-independent fabric. How can I take broadband, MPLS, cellular infrastructures, and ki kind of pull them all together and build a unified fabric? Not just build a unified fabric, one that is zero touch and zero trust. Right? And zero trust is important because the minute you mix private and public infrastructure, the element of trust just goes away. You need to be able to secure that infrastructure. You need to be able to authenticate everything that comes into that infrastructure. That's table stakes, uh, a transport independent fabric. On top of that, we have built a delivery platform that includes many of the elements that you're familiar with, routing, security, and so on and so forth. To us, routing is not just about right, running BGP or OSPF to the branch, right? Because that, I think, has existed for more than a decade. People know how to do. But the minute you start to bring this into the infrastructure, let's say I take a default route that's being advertised from my uh, data center. It makes its way through the MPLS network into a branch, gets re-advertised back through OSPF. The minute I have redistribution, we all know what happens in the network. Loops, uh, suboptimal paths, and so on and so forth. So you have to be able to up-level not just routing as an adjacency. I'm programming the, the device that's sitting behind me to this really large-scale network that's fully routed, that's fully capable as well. And we'll show all of this in action. We take pride in inserting ourselves into an existing infrastructure really two sites at a time. Right? You can take just a pair of sites put us in the mix, and we participate in the existing topology, and you can start to migrate the infrastructure. In fact, many of our customers that have gone through this journey of from zero sites all the way up to thousands of sites start in exactly that way. At, at, some, at some time, they go through like 25, 50 sites at a time, but they all start small and then grow big as well. The next piece of it is, is really around security and, and segmentation. Um, security is table stakes. You need to have authentication. You need to have encryption. At the same time, you need to have access control into the network as well. And we'll talk a lot about what that means. David will show all of these things in, in action as well. I want to double click on a couple of things and then um, move, move to some of the other pieces. Segmentation. Um, segmentation has existed in networks for probably over a decade. We all know how VLANs work. The branches have had VLANs for, again, a decade. The data center has been virtualized, again, for, for a decade. But the wide area has been a pretty single blob. Why is that the case? When we ask this question to customers uh, that, hey, do you want your network to be segmented? The answer is absolutely yes. Can you do it? The answer is an absolute no, right? And so we've been able to, again, help our customers through this whole journey of, of segmentation. And segmentation could be for a variety of reasons. It could be for guest Wi-Fi reasons. I just take guest Wi-Fi. Uh, I offload that out to the uh, internet. I do a split tunnel and send it out. It could be for compliance reasons. It could be to separate lines of business, a, a wide variety of things. We subscribe to bringing segmentation all the way to the CPE boundary and not just limited to the PE boundary, right? like in the, in the MPLS world. And we'll show, again, some of these things in, in action as well. Now, many of you, I'm sure, are wondering, OK, this is technology I've known, I've heard, uh, what is new here, right? And when we built this in a very modular way with the transport independent fabric, the components that give us the delivery platform, and then applied the SD pieces of SD-WAN on top of it, things like application SLA. I can pre-classify applications into 3,000 known applications. I can take an SLA, slap that against an application, and say, anywhere in the infrastructure, if I see WebEx traffic and I have a path that's less than 100 milliseconds of latency, take that. Don't take any other path. We can actually put a single policy uh, on, on the centralized uh, management platform, and, and the entire network will start to honor that type of a policy. Right? So things of that sort can be done really, really in a simple way. We'll show that in, in action as well. Uh, a few other things around cloud, uh, the ability to create different topologies is also important. 
Uh, one of the, the large retailers have had requirements, hey, I have guest Wi-Fi traffic that needs to do a, a split tunnel. I have video surveillance traffic because a theft happens in one of the stores and all my nearby stores need to get that video surveillance feed. And so I need to be able to stream that. So that requires a partial mesh. I have PCA compliant traffic that needs to go hub and spoke. Give all of this capability on a single platform, right? And so we actually can segment the network and actually provide these different kinds of topologies as well. And all of this is delivered with uh, a single pane of glass where you can have configuration management, troubleshooting, and also a layer of analytics. Once again, we'll show that in, in action as well. To us, this is what an enterprise class SD-WAN solution needs to look like. It is not one thing, it is not two things, it's, it's all of these things working in unison across multiple thousands of sites. Now you may be wondering, what does this mean to the cloud? And when, when people say cloud and say it's one thing, uh, we frown because it's not one thing, it's really two things. You have to fundamentally separate infrastructure as a service from SaaS. And at the, at, the, at the root of it, this all looks really simple, but the devil is in the details. In the IAS world, typically you've had a data center that cloud bursts into a public cloud, and that's how networks have been. The role of the network infrastructure guys have been to connect the sites to the data center, and that's about it, right? That leads to suboptimality, it leads to tromboning, it leads to a, a lot of issues. What we have done is actually we've taken our piece of software, put that directly into the public cloud, and made the public cloud part of the wide area. Mm -hmm. So you're naturally extending your perimeter, not just from a branch to a site, to a data center, to a campus, but all the way up to a public cloud as well. And that story is very different if you take SaaS now into the picture. Uh, if we go to Microsoft and say, hey, can you spin up an instance of our software inside uh, O365, they'll say, that's the door, please, uh, please show yourself out, right? Nobody wants to take a foreign piece of software and put that into a SaaS cloud. And, and so there are different things that you'll have to do to optimize applications that are cloud-based, especially SaaS-based. Uh, things around getting the telemetry of the public cloud provider, incorporating that into your best path computation so that you can optimize access to the cloud. Once again, David will show all of this uh, in action as well. I wanna touch on a, on a couple of things and then I'll talk about the components of the solution and then we'll get into the, the juicy part which is really the demo. So security and hardening. Um, we like to stand on the shoulder of giants uh, that have proven themselves in the market. And you see a couple of them uh, listed out here on the, on the screen here. Uh, it's very hard for a brand new player to come into the network and say, please trust me, because uh, honestly, if I say that to you, you wouldn't trust me either, right? Uh, and so we like to partner with uh, some of these players here to provide a few things. One, service insertion. Um, if my business logic says this application needs to go through a firewall, Irrespective of where the firewall is in the infrastructure, I need to be able to service insert it. Uh, same thing for uh, traffic that's, uh, that's destination, uh, that destined to WWW or uh, HTTP uh, uh, transactions going to the internet as well. So Zscaler is a pretty big partner uh, for us in, in that category. We'll show again these things in action. And finally, um, it needs to be simple to operate. Uh, you need to be able to, a global view, you need to be able to zoom in, zoom out, and be able to look at the entire uh, infrastructure and get some rich analytics as well uh, on top of that, on top of that network. The, uh, I'm gonna cover a couple of things on, on the product, but uh, I'm, I'm looking around the room here and I know I've talked for like five minutes nonstop, <laughs> so I'll, I'll take a breath, uh, also see if you, if you guys have uh, questions. All right, I'll take that as a no. So the components of the solution, uh, this is not all PowerPoint. Uh, there is stuff that actually exists, and, uh, and this is kind of how it works. Uh, so the, it's really two aspects to the solution. Uh, you have what we call as V-Edge routers. You see one on the, on the table here, which has uh, two antennas with, uh, with LTE. Uh, these are either physical or virtual devices that sit at the edge of the network. It could be your data center edge, it could be your site, uh, your branch, your admin office, whatnot. And the same thing can extend all the way into a public cloud as well. Um, we really don't care whether this is a piece of hardware or a piece of uh, software. It's the innovation that we have inside of the software that really counts. Uh, all of the traffic that flows freely within the enterprise free, freely flows between these VEDGE devices. And the data plane here is IPsec uh, AES-256 based, and the traffic flows freely here. Now, 
when it comes to network wide connectivity, um, that's where we bring in elements of the controller and the management platform as well. Uh, the management platform is responsible for configuring the devices, monitoring them, troubleshooting them, and so forth. And the controller is responsible for taking a piece of information, providing that to the rest of the infrastructure. Taking a policy, crunching that, and then providing that to the rest of the infrastructure as well. And so these are really the, the three components of the solution. We have the, the management platform that we call vManage, the vSmart controllers that are responsible for many, many things uh, around network-wide routing, around authentication, around policy crunching, and, and, and many other things, and then the edge device itself. We don't subscribe to dumb, dumb, dumb edges. Uh, we feel fundamentally the edges need to have some level of intelligence. If you are participating in OSPF or BGP, you need to have some brain in order to participate in that topology. And so the network devices, the vEdges, have local intelligence. When it comes to network-wide connectivity, they have to go to the controller, uh, and they pre-get that information and build a topology. We'll show that again in action as well. The set of uh, devices that we have, the vEdges, uh, it's not a single device. Uh, we have flavors that provide uh, 10 gig aggregation, um, 1 gig, uh, 100 meg, all EES 256-based uh, Ethernet uh, with integrated LTE. So you can just take a SIM card, put that inside one of these devices, and I have uh, SD-WAN connectivity out through my favorite uh, carrier. Uh, and the same thing for Wi-Fi on, on the LAN side as well. And the same piece of software that runs on all of this is also available uh, in a virtualized form fact that I mentioned. We can spin up an instance in an Amazon VPC uh, in an Azure cloud, and you can have a VCP offering out of that as well. So this, this portfolio will continue to expand, uh, but the architecture is, is going to remain the same. So that was the intro um, covering the aspects of uh, where we have been, the customers, what are the use cases, what are the, the main technology blocks, and also the, the components of the solution.